Well, good morning. We'd like to welcome everybody to Hillgrass Baptist Church this morning. We're going to start off this morning's service with a baptism, so if you will, bow your heads and we'll pray. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that we can come into your house. Lord, we just pray that the words that you've laid on Brother Roger's heart this morning would be brought in a way that if there's some lost soul here today, Lord, that needs to know you, that they would step out and come forward and ask you into their life. Now be with the ones that are going through the baptismal waters this morning that we would, as a church, get behind them and help them in any way that we can, Lord, and just uh, mentor them. Just be with us now, lead God and direct us, and forgive us when we fail thee. For it's all these things that we ask in your sweet and precious holy name. Amen. Well, good morning. This morning going through the baptismal waters is a new youth member. Uh, she came to us during VBS this year. Uh, day one, she was a little uh, standoffish and not sure what, what to think of everything. Uh, by day two, she was interacting with everybody and, and uh, uh, beating up on the boys in the different games that we were playing. And so we, we divided the boys and the girls, and they, they conquered us mo most of the time. So this is uh, Lacey Wright that we're going to be baptizing today. Lacey Wright, do you confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? I do. In obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ, and by profession of your statement, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this wonderful young lady, Lacey, who has gone through the baptism. We know, Lord, that these waters are not magic waters, but it's her heart that has changed, and we're thankful for that and for her profession of faith. I pray, Lord, for her. I pray for her family, and I pray for our church, Father God, that we would uh, raise her in, in your knowledge and your word. We love you and praise you in Christ's name. Now, church, you commit to helping to bring up Lacey and the Word and commit to loving on her and, and accepting her uh, by baptism to our uh, church. If you do, raise your hand and say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And if you would please stand, we'll continue on with 426, Victory in Jesus 426. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary. To save a wretch like me, I heard a boat is groaning of his precious blood. I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with this redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard a His cleansing power revealing how we made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, Did Jesus come and heal my broken spirit? And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus. 
Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and taught me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood and you may be seen Well, good morning once again, Hillcrest. What a wonderful day of worship it's already been, and it's going to continue, continue, continue. I have a few announcements for you. Uh, July 24th, this Wednesday is our quarterly business meeting. Uh, we're going to be going over a lot of things, so we would uh, love for you to, to be a part of that. It's part of our worship. We have to conduct business here uh, in the church as well, and so uh, we do pray that you would be in attendance and uh, for that uh, quarterly business meeting, followed by a, a shorter uh, Bible study and some time of prayer. So uh, that is on Wednesday. Then Thursday, uh, we have the Joy's Luncheon, uh, potluck meal with chicken, bread, and drinks provided. Um, then we have uh, Ju July 31st, I believe, is rescheduled to August the 9th. Uh, that weekend, August 9th through 11th, is the weekend we're uh, having uh, Brother Scott Kennedy come back uh, from Mississippi, and that's the actual weekend uh, that we're calling him uh, to vote, vote for a call. Uh, and so he will spend uh, Friday night, we'll have a potluck with him, we'll be able to interact with him and, and socialize with him. Uh, on Saturday, I think they have a pretty packed schedule uh, of taking care of some things here while they're in town. Uh, and then Sunday, he's going to preach. After he preaches, we're going to uh, dismiss him, and then we'll, we'll have a special called business meeting where we will vote uh, on whether or not to call him as our uh, new pastor. And so it's important uh, that you're uh, here on August 11th uh, for that. Let's see, what else is going on? Pam, you leave this week, right? Awesome, so go ahead. I know Pam was here Thursday, late, 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 doing uh, laundry and taking care of all that stuff, and so we appreciate all the work you do uh, with the, the GAs. Uh, the RAs and Challengers are uh, starting a drive uh, with school supplies, and so there's a box out there with school supplies. Uh, it's in uh, uh, cooperation with New Light uh, Church across the street. 
Uh, they're actually having the back to school uh, stuff and or uh, uh, I don't know what to call it, but uh, yeah. So uh, we're collecting for them and we'll send that over there as we help them out and uh, work together for that. And I think that's all the announcements that I have, but Mr. Bill Farmer does have an announcement. wonderful things with Hillcrest, I believe. And one of the seeds that we're planting is today, uh, if everything works out right, I have a photographer coming who is going to be taking a 360 degree photograph of our sanctuary <clears throat> and also over at the Family Life Center. I encourage you, if you will, um, after service is concluded, just hang around. It should not take very long to take the photograph. But we'd like to have as many of you to stay um, to be a part of that photograph, if you will. Um, and that will happen right after service has concluded this morning. Right after service, if you please just, uh, after we pray and, and dismiss, don't dismiss. Stay right in your seats because a full church uh, is, is better than an empty church, right? And so when, when we take these photographs, we want, uh, want you all in your seats. And so that will be today, right after service. And I think that is all the announcements that I have. Oh, I thought somebody said my name again. All right, we want to welcome you to Hillcrest Baptist Church. Visitors, we're glad that you came uh, to Hillcrest this morning. Uh, we want to welcome you. We want to welcome each other. And the way we do that at Hillcrest is we stand up. We're going to sing a song, and as we sing, we're going to come around and we're going to shake hands, hug necks, fist bump, high five. be seated and as we're being seated children come on down glad to see you guys this morning. How's everybody doing? Good? Good? Okay. All right. I want everybody to stand up. Stand up. Okay. Ready? All right. I want you to stand on one foot. Let's see how long we can do it. Two Mississippi. I'm out. Three Mississippi. Four Mississippi. Six Mississippi. Oh, out of seven. Oh, out. Eight Mississippi. Oh, no injuries. What are we doing back there? Here we go. Oh, another one down. Oh, oh, another one down. Oh, all right, Leon, where are you? Oh, you too. All right, three-way tie, I call it. Oh, sit down, you guys, I bet could go on forever. Was it easy to stand on one foot for a long period of time? 
Oh, this one says yes. I lasted two seconds. I'm being generous. Maybe two seconds. It was really hard to hold your balance when you're missing something that's supposed to be there to help hold you up, right? To help give you balance, to give you strength. You know, today, uh, the message that Brother Roger is sharing, it talks about how all of us, me, you guys, all of them, everybody over here, everybody up there, all our friends back in choir. Did you know that God gave each of us unique gifts and talents? And they're not all the same, are they? What is something, raise your hand first, what is something that you're good at? Don, what are you good at? Piano. You play the piano. I didn't know that. Donna, you're the piano. Baron, what are you good at? What? Video games. That means you, uh, your mind works quickly, doesn't it? I know this about you outside of video games. What are you good at? You, you too with video games. All right. Swimming. Oh, I wish I was better. I'm okay at swimming, but it's because I'm buoyant, and so it just kind of naturally happens. But Mr. Steve is a really good swimmer. Like, he can swim a really long way. Leah, what are you good at? Soccer. Actually, Leah is good at soccer. You're doing better all the time, too. And Leah works hard at playing soccer. She goes to extra camp. She exercises. She stays in shape. So she puts a lot of effort to being a good soccer player. Yes. Swimming. Another good swimmer. <gasps> swimming. Another good swimmer. So we're all good at different things, right? And some things we're better at than others. You know, you wouldn't maybe think about some of the things that we do well as things that God could use. But we're told different that the Lord made us uniquely gifted to be part of his family so that we fill a purpose there. So that we fill that purpose. And if one of us isn't filling the purpose that God called us to, could we stand on one leg for a while? You guys did really well. But it makes it really hard to do for a long time, doesn't it? Isn't it nice and kind of amazing that God has a big picture where we all fit together to do his work the way he wants it done? Now, I can stand up here and chitter-chatter, and I can sing up there. I like those things. I'm good at those things sometimes. Sometimes I'm not so good at it, but I'm okay at those things. There are other things, though, that I'm not very good at, and I am always so grateful for people that are good at those other things, like being really good planners, really good organizers, um, being uh, really good with uh, babies. And we've got people in the nursery right now watching babies. I'm so glad they're good. I'm so glad they're here to do that. So I just want you to remember as you grow up that even right now, you have something that God has given you that he wants to use as part of his perfect picture of God's family. You know what that means? You're needed. You're needed. God's church needs you. The Lord needs you. How wonderful to go through life knowing that the Lord who created all things needs you and wants you to be part of what he's worked on. All right. So I'm going to work on my balance. I'm going to study Baron and uh, Leah and your balance and try to copy that and get better at it because I can get better at the things I'm not good at. And in the meantime, uh, we need some good nourishment to keep us in balance and strong. And so I looked ahead and Miss Lisa got some weirdo Reese's. white chocolate and peanut butter, or white cream and peanut butter. Do you like them? I've never had one. All right, so we'll see how this treat goes. I opened it up, and it wasn't my familiar, so I'm looking forward to it. All right, let's stop. Right, come stand up here. Stand up close. Ready? Okay. Let's stand close together, and we're going to pray close together, and we're going to pray that God uses all of us as we grow up for his purpose, okay? Ready? All right. Bow your heads. Let's give God our attention. Father God, I thank you so much for this group of beautiful young people. I'm so glad they're here. And Father, thank you for their parents and loved ones that, that made sure they were here this morning. 
Father, help us to remember that you love us, that you created us with purpose, and that um, you have a purpose for each one of us to serve as part of your part of your kingdom, part of your family, part of your church family. Lord, help us to recognize that and be responsible with that, Lord. We love you so much, and we thank you for our special treat today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me know in the hall if this was a good, if these were good. How much do we get? Let's see. I don't know that we have enough for two today. Let's see how it goes. Don't, don't walk off. One of you can name it though. Baron, how kind. All right. We'll have to remember Baron's double button. Okay. All right. Let's Book number 406, The Solid Rock, 406. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, Oh, may I then in him be found, Dressed in his righteousness alone, Faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. And if you would please stand as we continue on with 407, Because He Lives, 407. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my button, an empty grave is there to my Savior lives, because He lives, I can face tomorrow, because He lives, all fear is gone, because I know Because he lives, how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy 
he gives, but greater still, the calm assurance this child can face on certain days, because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know Because he lives, and then one day I'll cross the river, I'll fight life's final war with pain, and then as death gives way to me. Because he lives. And you may be seated. Good morning. I would like to share a verse with you. Um, in John 14, verse 12, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And he tells us, he says, in 13, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Won't you pray with me? Satan's not wanting us to pray together today. Do we need to do it without music? All right. I speak the name of Jesus over you. In your hurting, in your sorrow, 
I ask my God to move. I speak the name because it's all that I can do. In desperation, I seek heaven and pray this for you. I pray for your healing, that circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I speak the name of all authority, declaring blessings, every promise he is faithful to keep. I speak the name no grave could ever hold. He is greater, he is stronger, he's the God of possible. I pray for your healing, the circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, come believe it, come receive it. Oh, the power of His Spirit can be forever yours. Come believe it, come receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus, all things are possible. We pray for our healing, that circumstances would change. We pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. We pray that a breakthrough would happen today. We pray miracles over our lives in Jesus' name. We pray for revival, for restoration of faith. We pray that the dead will come. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Lord, you said anything that we pray, that the glory may come to the Father, that you will do it. So we pray these things in your name. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come into your house today to worship you, Lord. Lord, I would ask you to be with Brother Roger, the message that you laid on his heart today, Lord. Lord, I ask you to bless this offering to glorify you, Lord. Lord, I ask all this in the precious, sweetest name we know, Jesus Christ.
a beautiful melody and uh, one of the oldest tunes in the world and we put Christian words to it. I was singing along as you played. Thank you for playing today. Take your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. We're going to continue a study we began on Wednesday night on the ministry of the Holy Spirit for the believer. So good to see all of you today. I hope all of you will stay for the picture, by the way. You don't have to be a member of the church to stay. Uh, and we'll all, we'll all, y'all look good today. You look really good. And thank you, Pam, for doing such a great job and uh, praying the name of Jesus over us. Talking about the body of Christ today, and we're going to read two verses as we begin, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 13. We're preaching through 1 Corinthians, and in a series, uh, the whole idea was to get ready for the next pastor, keeping the church on course and uh, not getting off course. And the idea was to touch subjects that, uh, in the Bible that would help us be a better people, be ready for the pastor. And now we're on the Holy Spirit. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I hope you do. Do you believe the Holy Spirit is here right now? Do you feel any tugs in your heart? Any conviction of sin? Any need for a closer walk with God? Do you, do you think about eternity that... You're an eternal soul that's going to live somewhere in heaven or hell for eternity. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. That's why we have church. Do you feel part of this body? Do you feel the love of the body of Christ? That's the Holy Spirit that holds us together. It's not a preacher. It's not just one singer, though they are, they're important. But it's the love of Christ that binds us all together. The ministry of the Holy Spirit for the church. We're looking at and we're naming on Wednesday nights, we'll continue this study on the next few Wednesday nights before Brother Scott comes, but the various works that the Holy Spirit does for us. And I want to talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit beginning in verse 12 and 13, continuing what we started Wednesday night. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Talking about the church, the body of Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we are Jews or Gentiles, whether we are bond or free, we've all been made to drink into one Spirit. So we're introduced to that word Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. And we saw it, if you look at chapter 12, verse 1, we saw last Wednesday night, now concerning spiritual gifts or spiritualities, I don't want you to be ignorant. Verse 2, you know you were Gentiles, that is, you were lost. You were not saved. You were not part of the family of God. Carried away to dumb idols. And in the first century church, they worshiped and bowed before idols. And we don't see many people do that, maybe in America today, but we bow before money, amen? We bow before power. We bow before sex. We bow before all the, our gods because we don't know Jesus. Dumb idols, even as you're led. But verse 3, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. By the way, that makes my skin crawl more than anything in the whole world to hear someone use the name Jesus as a curse word. You hear it, I hear it all the time. Maybe you hear it more than I do. Usually people know I'm a, pre a preacher. Whenever I play golf with someone, I don't know. I don't tell them I'm a preacher, so they'll be embarrassed the first time they curse after they hit a bad shot, and they'll say, what do you do? I said, I'm a Baptist preacher. That's happened many times. But no one can curse Jesus and be full of the Spirit of God. But notice the next one. No man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is... The third person of the Trinity. That's what's the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. And one of the things the Holy Spirit does, really the first thing He does when you get saved, is you're baptized by the Holy Spirit. Lacey, thank you for your baptism today. You blessed us. And I could just feel the Holy Spirit in your life. I see it. I see that God's done a work in your heart. That's what happens when you get saved. You're just like when you're baptized in water, you're covered by the water. When you're saved, you're covered by the Spirit of God. Amen. Now, introduction. 
uh, real quickly, if you want to follow along or you can write the verses down, I want to walk you through three or four verses in the Bible to introduce you to the Holy Spirit. Genesis 1, 3. Actually, we go with verse 2. Genesis 1, 2. And the earth was without form and void. That's the way a lost person is. You're without form and vo you're void spiritually. You're a body, but you don't have the Holy Spirit because you lost it because of sin. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. When you're not a Christian, you're living in the dark. You don't have any idea the right way to live. You, you don't feel bad about lying. You don't feel bad about uh, thinking the thoughts you shouldn't think. You try to uh, avoid the Ten Commandments. You try to avoid church and so on. That's the way the world was in the very beginning. Without form, without void, darkness. But look at verse 2. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So God's Spirit came and enveloped this planet and began to make cosmos out of chaos. Two big words. Cosmos means an orderly world. Chaos means a disorderly world. That's what God does when you get saved. Your life is in chaos because you're on your way to hell. But God's Spirit comes in and He builds cosmos. That is, He builds order out of your life and you put Christ first, Jesus first. God guides you. Now go to the uh, first chapter of Matthew, or the first book of the New Testament, the third chapter, and we see the Holy Spirit again you see the Holy Spirit often when Jesus was baptized. Now, why do you have to get baptized? I can give you one reason, and this is enough, because Jesus told you to. Amen. That's why you should be baptized, because God told you to. But baptism is your identification with Christ. You're saying when you're baptized, I believe Jesus died and was buried, and He rose again. That's what a baptism is. Put under the water out of the water. It's a picture of the gospel. Christ died for our sins and was buried according to the scriptures. He rose again the third day. Spiritually when you're saved, the Holy Spirit comes upon you and Jesus was baptized. And we look at verse 16, Matthew 3. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water and lo, the heavens were open and the Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove and a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Here you see the Trinity. Jesus, the Son of God, baptized by John the Baptist. The Holy Spirit in the form of a dove came and lighted on Jesus' shoulder. And God the Father spoke from heaven, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. I like to think every time someone is baptized, God says up in heaven, This is my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. And so... We see now Jesus. Now go to John chapter 3. I'm simply introducing the Holy Spirit to you. And in John 3, Jesus has met a man, Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a very religious man, but he was lost. I heard a country preacher one time preached on him, this chapter and called him Nicodemus. Well, I don't care if you call him Nicodemus or Nicodemus, just get born again. Amen. And so Nicodemus was a rich powerful ruler of the Jews. But he was lost because here's what Jesus said to him in John 3, verse 5. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. Here's the problem we all have. We are sons of Adam and Eve. Every one of us came from Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve sinned. And the Bible, God told Adam and Eve, the moment you eat the fruit, you will surely die. They ate that fruit. They eventually died physically. But they died spiritually and lost the glory of God. When you're born again, you get the glory of God back. They had the Holy Spirit when they were created. They were made in the image of God. When they sinned, they lost the image of God. And now you and I we have the marred image of God and we have to be born again that the image of Christ be formed in us from the inside out. Now go to the last chapter of the Bible in this brief introduction of the Holy Spirit. And we see the Holy Spirit again on chapter 22. 
verse 17, just five verses from the end. And the Spirit and the bride, who's the bride? That's the church. Say, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him that is a thirst, come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. So the Holy Spirit is, is in the world today saying, come to me, come to Jesus, come to me, come to Jesus, come to me, come to Jesus. So that's the introduction. The Holy Spirit was here in creating the world. He's the eternal God. The Holy Spirit was there at the baptism of Jesus. This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. The Holy Spirit to, spoke to Nicodemus, speaks to every person, and says, you must be born again. And now the Holy Spirit today is saying, come, 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 through the church, through the bride. Now let's, let's go to the uh, second point. We've seen baptism in verse, the baptism of the Spirit. Now go to verse 14 of 1 Corinthians 12. Let's talk about, secondly, the body of Christ. That's what the church is. There's a lot of words for the church. Uh, the, the church is the body of Christ. The church is the building of Christ. The church is the beloved of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. But the word that's always used more often than any other word is the church is the body of Christ. What a compliment to you and to me. Amen? Just think about that. I feel so unworthy every time I think about Preaching, for example. I'll tell you a secret, and every preacher will say the same thing. Every time I get ready on Saturday night to preach, and get, of course you've been working on it all week, but it's really on you. The devil will remind me of everything bad I've ever done in my life. I mean, back to when I was eight years old, or four years old, how mean a little kid I was when I was... In the sixth grade, excuse me for that's conf honest confession, good for the soul. Not mean to everybody, but a few people. But uh, and you think about that, and then God says, you're, the devil says, you're not worthy to preach tomorrow. You know what? I finally learned how to do what to do. Just say, Amen. You're right, but I'm going to do it because God says His grace is sufficient for me. Praise the Lord. So another thing I feel unworthy is the body of Christ. The body of Christ that we are, we are here to represent Him. All of us have a place. All of us have some use. All of us have something we ought to do for God. And it's not, it's not a building that brings people to Christ. It's not the preacher necessarily. It's the, what he preached brings people to Christ. It's the love of the people that brings it together. A man can't preach up here without the body of Christ out there doing the many things the body does. With that introduction, let's read from verse 14 onward. For the body is not one member, but many. So we have a lot of members. If the foot, now, that may be what you and I are. We're just a foot inside the body. If the foot shall say, I am not the hand, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? Now, why did he use foot and hand? Well, sometimes uh, it's been said that a hand is one of the most beautiful thing, part of the body, and so it's got all those bones in it. But a foot is not very beautiful. It really, that's true, you know, and it's not as pretty as some other parts of the body. But you've got to have a foot and you've got to have a hand. Now we go to verse 16. If the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Uh, now, you've got to have an ear to hear, you've got to have an eye to see. They work together. Verse 17. If the whole body was an eye, where was the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where was the smelling? Verse 18. But now God has set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased Him. So, God has made you just what you are. Amen to that. That's a good thing to say to young people today who, when someone says, are you sure you're a boy? Are you sure you're a girl? First of all, I wish someone was right there to slap that person that just said that to that child. But secondly, God made you what you are. He made you female. He made you male. And maybe you have a handicap. Maybe you have a, a need. I, I hadn't planned on saying this, but we were, we were given a, a mentally handicapped child as our first child. 
She's 50 years old now. And we have taken care of her for 50 years. And uh, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Made me totally dependent upon God. And she, if there's anything good about me, it's because God used her to break me. Amen. So no matter how God made you or with the handicap you have, or maybe you're not as uh, pretty as someone or as handsome as someone, but just wait, by the time you get my age, we all look alike. You know, we're all look about equal. So <laughs> all that goes away. It all kind of equals out, doesn't it? Same with the, with the body of Christ. Some of us have a certain gift. Some of us have another gift. Some of us are articulate. Some of us could never speak in public, but some of us are prayer warriors. One lady said to me, Brother Roger, I, I'm just a bench warmer. And I looked at her and I said, I thank God you warm that bench every time the doors are open and I've got somebody to preach to. Amen. Praise God. So we all have a part in the body of Christ. So that was verse 18. He made us all as it pleased Him. He's got a purpose for you in, your, in the body of Christ. Verse 19. And if, they were all, if all were one member, where would be the body? What if the whole body was a hand? And, and I believe he's going to develop that now. Verse 20. Now they are many members, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, nor the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. So sometimes we think, well, why do I need, why do we need that person? That person's always bringing up things I don't want to hear. Well, maybe God is using that person to show us what we need. He may have the gift of discernment. That's a, that's a great gift, discernment. You need the gift of discernment when you're going to, uh, if you ever had money to make a, an investment. That's not something I'm very uh, qualified in for sure. But you want to have discernment to make sure you're dealing with an honest person. Or maybe you're dealing with a person you're going to uh, do a business contract with. And you want, to, you want to check that out, check that person out, have discernment. Maybe there are people in the church, they've got discernment. They're a little more questioning. We always have those in every church. They ask more questions. That's okay, as long as they love the church. That makes us think that's a gift of the Spirit. And then there's the gift of mercies, and we're going to look at those in just a moment. So we see the body of, of the Spirit. Now, baptism body... Uh, let's, let's look at a couple of other passages. I want you to see the entire li get list of gifts. Go to Ephesians chapter 4 quickly. Ephesians 4. There are three uh, texts in the New Testament. Ephesians 4. We're going to begin in verse 11. Uh, Ephesians 4 lists some gifts. And he, uh, 4 11, Ephesians 4 11. He gave some apostles and some prophets. Now, those gifts no longer exist. Why? Because we got the Bible. Amen? Okay, follow along with me. Apostles were the men that ha had seen Jesus face to face. There are no apostles today. The apostles gave us the Bible. Then prophets, they had still had prophets in, in this, that first century. The Word of God was completed about the year 100 A.D. with the God, book of Revelation. And once that was finished, there was no, and hear me now, no new revelation. You got the Bible. We don't need any new revelation. What we need, listen to me, is illumination on the revelation we already have. Amen? Are you following me? And I, I, I'm going to get specific. I don't need Joseph Smith to tell me something. I don't need, excuse me, Mohammed to tell me something new. I've got the Word of God. I don't need Buddha to tell me something new. I need illumination on the revelation. This is the record of the apostles and the prophets. That's the foundation. So those gifts don't exist anymore. But he mentions the next one, verse 11, evangelist. That's really the work of a missionary or a church planter. Someone who goes to take the gospel where it's not established. For example, uh, Southern Baptists have what we call North American Mission Board, which you give to, through the cooperative program in your offerings. And they have a vision of planting churches in, a, in America 
outside the South. Now, we're, we're definitely not all Christians in the South, but no one who grew up in the South can stand before God and said, there was no one there to tell me about Jesus. you got a church everywhere in the South. But if you go to the Northeast or way up in my, some areas of the West and Seattle and other, there's not as many Bible preaching churches. So Southern Baptists have a plan to, to go. They have 32 cities named from Boston to Los Angeles to Miami to, plant, to put our emphasis in planting churches there. Those people who are church planters, I would call evangelists. They're missionaries. Then you've got verse 11, pastors, teachers. John MacArthur says that's one gift, pastor, teacher. And we need, we need pastors who will teach us the Word of God. Now go to Romans 12, real quickly, real quickly. I'm just trying to give you an overview here of the, of the work of the Holy Spirit in the body of Christ. We see a, a list of the gifts in Romans 12, verse 6 through 8. Romans 12, verse 6 through 8. Romans 12, 6 through 8. Having them gifts according, differing according to the grace given us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy. And I think that uh, rather than not, they're not prophets, but the prophecy, that is, they're preaching the Word of God. That's preaching. Or ministry, that's the word diakonos or deacon. That they're servants. They love to serve. They love to find places in the church to serve, to help people, to go the second mile. Or he that exhorts, or he that teaches, teaching, our Bible teaching, that's, that's a great ministry. Thank God for all you Sunday school teachers through the years. How many of you, even if you're not teaching now, have taught Sunday school in the past? Raise your hand real high. Raise your hand real high. Nominating committee, look around. Just look at those. Uh, thank God you taught the Word of God to people. And I know sometimes you think the children aren't listening. They're listening. They're soaking it in. And your adults need it. Thank God for the teachers in a church, and that's a gift of the Spirit. We're back at Romans 12 again, and we're in <clears throat> verse 8. Or he that exhorts, that's the word encouragement. Thank God for the encouragers, encouraging people in the church. Thank God for the people who never gave up on me and never gave up on you. And you go to church and people put their arm around you and love on you. Man, it's so good to see you, and they take an interest in you. Encouragement. Verse 8. He that gives does with his simplicity. Maybe God's given you some success in life and you give over and above the tithe. You ought to. To whom much is given, much shall be required. But do it with simplicity. Don't draw attention to yourself. He that rules with diligence, that is, he's got the gift of administration. There are people within the body of Christ, they're just good with uh, leading. They, they're natural born leaders. Now, it's not a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing. Sometimes they may, they may be uh, not a CEO in a business, but they have spiritual leadership, and you trust their opinion, and you ask for their opinion. You're, the Bible says, in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. And you've got people who are good leaders. And I love this one. He that shows mercy with cheerfulness. We ought to be, uh, seek for that gift, to have mercy well, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 12 and we'll get to the other list of gifts as we preach through it here in just a moment. We're back in 1 Corinthians 12 and now we see the word belonging. We've seen the word baptism of the Spirit. We've seen the body of the Spirit. We've introduced in verse 21 and following the word belonging. Every one of us belong in the church. Verse 23. Every one of us belong whether we have a visible gift or a less visible gift whether we have a leadership gift or we're that person who's merciful, that you're always merciful. You always uh, are finding something good to do or say to someone. Uh, maybe your mother did what my mother did. If I ever started saying something negative, what would she say to me? If you can't say anything good, finish it for me. Don't say anything at all. Well, now, that's we all want to gossip. Say amen. Don't make me feel bad. We want to hear the dirt. No, that's not what a Christian's supposed to be like. A Christian's supposed to be full of mercy and try to help that person, lift them up. Thank God. God's a merciful God. Amen. 
It's one of the great words to describe God. He's merciful. He's merciful. Uh, Psalm, I believe it's 126. Don't hold me to that. I think it's Psalm 126. But uh, 26 verses. Uh, you'll check me out and you'll tell me later afterwards. They, people love to do that and correct the pastor during the, after the sermon. Yeah, this was the wrong verse. But there's a, there's a psalm that's got 26 verses, and every one of those verses, 26 times it says, the mercy of the Lord endureth forever. 26 times! The mercy of the Lord endures forever. The mercy of the Lord endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Thank God. When will, when will God run out of mercy to give you and me? The mercy of the Lord endureth forever. Praise God. So if you've got the gift of mercy, that may be the most Christ-like gift there is that you forgive easily and you make people feel welcome. So but everybody belongs. Verse 24, For our comely parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, that the members should have the same care one of the other, for whether one member suffers, all members suffers with it, or one member be honored, all members rejoice with it. So some, and it says in verse 24, some are more comely. That is, some are more attractive necessarily to the outward man. Some gifts are, are more uh, out front, but God has put them together. Just think how God puts everything together in, in the organs of your body, uh, your liver, your pancreas. You know, you can't live without a pancreas and your heart and your lungs. And all that's just put in here. It's put together just perfectly. And we want to guard our health. And uh, <laughs> Excuse me for this. I'm going to throw it out. So I watch people smoke and I watch people drink. And I say to myself, I'm getting old quick enough. I don't want to do things that's going to add to it. Okay, you can take that and do whatever you want to with it. Because neither one of those are good for your health. It's a good way to have bad health. I need good health because this body, you're to take care of it. Same with the church. We're to take care of every member of this body and not do anything to hurt another member. God forgive us when we've hurt some member of the body of Christ. We want to work together and let those things work how our arm and our... You know, isn't it amazing? I can say and miss, I can think in my brain, hand and arm move. That is an absolute miracle. It's God and the Holy Spirit. The, he's the head. He's the head. And the Holy Spirit says, hand, go out and minister to someone. And someone ministers. Or it says, feet, go visit someone and invite them to church. Or he says to the heart, go show mercy to that person. Call them, check on them. We all belong. Everybody's important. Nobody is not important. We all are important in the body of Christ. Now we'll go to verse 27, last point, blessing. So when we have the baptism of the Spirit and we're emphasizing the body of Christ and Christ the head, and we're making sure we want everybody to feel like they belong and they're important, there's no unimportant members. Everybody is important, equally important. Then we have a blessing. Amen. That's what we need to have as we prepare for a possible new pastor coming, that we would be baptized with the Spirit, we'd be covered with the Spirit, we would emphasize the body of Christ with Christ as our head, we'd make everybody feel like they belong, and then there'll be a blessing here. Look at verse 27. Now, you are the body of Christ. What a compliment. We are the body of Christ. How gracious is God to let you and me be part of that body? How gracious is God to let me preach? How gracious is it for Him to be merciful to you and spare you and forgive you and bring you to this place today and say, I want to give you a new start, a new touch. Verse 27, and members in particular. So we're all the body of Christ, but each one of us is a member of the body once we're saved. Now he sums it up, verse 28, and God has set some in the church, first apostles and prophets. Now it just said those, those two are no longer, they were needed in the first century. Parenthesis here. We have to rightly divide the word of truth. I'm going to say that again. 2 Timothy 2, 15. 
We have to rightly divide the word of truth. Paul says things to this first century church. This is one of the first letters he ever wrote. They did not have a Bible. There was no Bible for them. All they had was Paul and then Apollos. So Paul was an apostle. Apollos came in as a prophet and they worked together. They were the word of God for these people. That's, you got to think about that for a minute. And then these letters started being written, and they had the written Word of God. But apostles and prophets, they no longer are, are existing in our world. As I said earlier, they're here in the Bible. And this will inform something we're going to say in a moment. Thirdly, teachers, after that, miracles, gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Now... The gift of tongues today, and I'm going to go with J.W. McGorman, my, my great Greek teacher in Southwestern Seminary, uh, took three years with him. He never even had an English Bible in his hand. He always just had a Greek New Testament. That's all he ever had. And he said the gift of tongues today relates to missions, and it's the ability to learn a language that is not your own rapidly so that you can go to where those people live that speak that language and share with them the gospel. I like that definition of tongues. Because some people, and I'll throw this in too, I have heard people say the baptism of the Spirit after you're saved means when you finally speak in tongues. And that is not accurate. That is not in the Bible. The baptism of the Holy Spirit happens the moment you're saved. And it has nothing to do with the gift of tongues. It means you are placed into the body of Christ. And you're, you're covered with the Holy Spirit. The gift of tongues was needed in that first century because they didn't have a Bible. And so the, someone would speak, it would be... And it was never gibberish. Today's gift of tongues is gibberish. So-called gift of tongues. It was a known language where someone was given the ability to give them the gospel in that known language. Today, we do uh, missionary work. So again, like apostles and prophets, some of these gifts are taken over by the Bible. And the Holy Spirit leads us to rightly divide the word of truth. Let's read on. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Verse 30, do all have the gift of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? So what we see developing in the, the Corinthian church, and it's in chapter 14 more developed, was uh, like they did everything else, they kind of they skewed it all and messed it up a little bit. And so Paul is writing this to tell them, concentrate on the body of Christ, concentrate on your role in the body of Christ, and remember there's no gift that's not important and work together in sharing the gospel. Then verse 31 which kind of will lead the way to the next message, which will be chapter 13. But you are covet, but covet earnestly the best gifts. Some translate that. You are coveting the best gifts. Either way, but covet, cherish earnestly the best gifts, yet I show you a more excellent way. And that's a good place to stop right there. Lord willing, in the next message, we'll talk about 1 Corinthians 13, which is one of the great chapters in the Bible that tells us how to get along in the body of Christ and for all the gifts of the Spirit to work together. Well, let's bow our heads and hearts in prayer. If you've uh, never accepted Jesus as your Savior, I can't pray that prayer for you. It's, but the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a promise. Father, hear our prayer. And if anyone needs to call on the name of the Lord, may they pray something like this. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. I don't understand it all, but come into my heart and life and save me. And let me start over with you. Bless, Father, each person here. Bless this church. Help us to understand every one of us are important to God, important to the body of Christ, important to the church. And we'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, let's stand and sing, trust and obey. If there's a decision you should make for Christ, you come right now as we stand and sing. Any way God has called you to be saved, to be baptized, to move your membership, you come as we sing.
And we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. What a glory he sheds on our way. Let us do his good will. He abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. We're going to continue to sing one more. But we never can prove the delights of His love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor He shows and the joy He bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. All right, let, let's bow our heads. Father, thank you. We want, to be, we want to be the body of Christ right now. For everyone who's had a special time of prayer in the pew or at the altar, answer their prayer. Help them to know that no one ever prayed to God that God didn't hear. And help us to know whatever the prayers are, you're already beginning the answer. Give us peace. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated a brief moment. And I'm going to ask Bill to come forward. Now, I did something, and I want you to do something. I did you a favor, and I want you to do me a favor. I cut my sermon about six minutes. And that was really, that's a real sacrifice. I want you to know that. So, so you would stay for this picture. So, uh, Bill, come down and uh, introduce our our folks that are going to take our picture, and. Uh,